Madam Speaker, as a patriotic citizen, as patriotic citizens and businesses, we are duty bound to honor all our tax obligations. All our tax ob obligations. To this effect, government has made progress in increasing awareness among citizens on the importance of paying tax. Government, however, will continue to regularly report to citizens on how their tax revenues are utilized. And we appreciate the work of the Minister of Finance in that score, regular reporting, because citizens need to know what's happening with their money. The introduction of online and mobile platforms by service providers has made it convenient and will continue to do so for our people and businesses to meet their tax obligations. We therefore urge our citizens to continue paying tax, as I said, and alert authorities of individuals and companies who are deviant, those that are not paying tax. When we know them, let's whisper to somebody, including those who evade taxes purely, just walk away from tax obligations. And we work hard to lower the tax burden. When we lower the tax burden, we expect compliance to go up. It's the way it works. We urge our citizens to always demand receipts for every purchase as part of their patriotic duty to promote tax compliance. Madam Speaker, another area where we need to exercise a deep sense of patriotism is in safeguarding public and private property in our country. These assets are built at a huge cost to the treasury, to the taxpayer, to the citizen, and are a significant component of our collective wealth in this nation. Sadly, the country has continued to witness the loss of public property through vandalism and theft. It's a daily issue. It is regrettable that ZESCO installations, water supply and sanitation infrastructure, and school property for that matter, in some of our communities have increasingly become targets of vandalism and theft. Not good, not acceptable. These acts of vandalism and reckless burning of bushes, for example, and theft, I must say, are retrogressive to our development efforts. They must be stopped and punished within our legal provisions. And no one should complain victimization when such is done because it's not acceptable. Safeguarding our public assets should also extend to how we utilize them. It is disheartening to note that some people still view water drainages and road traffic islands along the roads as dumping grounds for garbage. Shamelessly, people will dump garbage in these spaces. Garbage belongs elsewhere, not here. This is not only irresponsible, but also takes away from our right to live and operate in clean and dignified environments. The recent cholera outbreak, Madam Speaker, is a clear example of our citizens operating in unsustainable environmental situations. We cannot and we will not continue losing valued lives with this kind of reckless living. It is the duty of every one of us every one of us, the local authorities, businesses, citizens alike, to keep our country clean and to make it a place we should take more pride to live in. It's a duty of all of us. Local authorities should apply the available pieces of legislation to address the unsanitary conditions in our communities. They don't have to wait. The laws are there, including bylaws to effect what we're saying here. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, to enhance national unity, the United Party for National Development, UPND, the New Dawn Administration has ensured that the recruitment of public service workers, such as who? Teachers, health workers, defense and security personnel, is based on merit further the recruitments have been transparently undertaken for the first time in a long time. At all districts across the country, without segregation. 
The numbers are there again. Numbers don't lie. Anyone can access these numbers. To ensure equal opportunities for all our citizens is the reason this is happening. Consciously, we know some members of the ruling party complain, and our answer is very simple. We were elected into government to look after 20 million Zambians, all of them, from all the 10 provinces, 116 districts, from 156 constituencies, all of them without exception. I would like to hear, Madam Speaker, one who says in my district there has been nobody employed. I'm looking for one. Just one, not two. <laughs> Madam Speaker, to promote an all-inclusive society, our administration has continued to distribute national resources equally I didn't say equitably, but I wish to say so as well. And we will move to equity soon. But our agenda was to ensure there is equality first. Then we can move to equity because it's important to show, to demonstrate the intent of your government. This is evident in the implementation of the Enhanced Constituent Development Fund. Same tap. 156 constituencies. But we know some constituencies are more people. Some constituencies are bigger by geography, by land. We know. But we had to start with an equitas, not equitas, an equal perception. And then we can move to equity later on. Because if we didn't do it, Mr. Speaker, there could have been other arguments now going on in our country. So we will address those issues at the right time. This is Madam Speaker evident also in the way the CDF is being distributed from the central pool in terms of disbursement across the country. It's not just the allocation, but the release of these funds for the first time. It does not matter which constituents, which party the MP comes from, the councillor comes from. The resources are going. And that's intentional. It's not by chance. It's intentional. We also are clear, Madam Speaker, on social protection, farmer input support, even there, we brought equality away from what was happening just a few years ago. Now, all provinces, all districts, all constituencies receive equal amounts. Quantum based on the farming communities in there. Very important. Very important. And there are several other programs of this nature which are being implemented transparently and fairly across the country. Madam Speaker, we will continue on this positive trajectory and take development to each and every part of our country. Each and every part of our country in order to promote national unity for the benefit of all Zambians, 20 million of them, 20 million of them. And when we breed more, those will be taken account of. Democracy and constitutionalism. Madam Speaker, we are committed to deepening our democracy and constitutionalism as the surest way through which our people can be assured of their freedoms and right to participate in decision making. Again, statistics are there for everybody to see. The ratings are there for everybody to see. We don't have to say it ourselves. In this regard, we are delighted and honored that Zambia has been named among the top three most democratizing countries in the world. Madam Speaker, this has been done by an independent credible organization called VDEM. This recognition underscores our government's continuous efforts to promote the virtues of democracy, good governance, and the rule of law. Madam Speaker, in order to broaden the ever-expanding democratic space which this government has created and also increase the access to information, we have made it possible for 
44 new radio stations and 18 new television stations to be licensed countrywide in the last two and a half years. Numbers are there. These facilities can operate and should and will operate freely and without any interference whatsoever from government. More significantly, political parties, all political parties, and I watch their programs, Madam Speaker, every night, and civil society organizations are now able to make full use of these facilities to advance their agenda. And hopefully, the people's agenda. No issue at all. No threats of closures. Not necessary. Further, to provide access to the ZNBC signal for Radio 1 and 2, 15, 15 new FM transmitters have been installed in some rural districts of Eastern Province, Northern, Western, Southern, Luapula, and Muchinga provinces, Madam Speaker. Again, numbers don't lie. Madam Speaker, to enhance the participation of eligible voters in elections, we have undertaken, again for the first time, although the law was there before, continuous voter registration. It's now operational. A program which is in line with the Electoral Process Act. As I said, the law was there, but it was not implemented for whatever reason. That doesn't matter. It's now operational. The program now covers all the 10 provincial centers of our country. Lovely country, Zambia. Madam Speaker, to strengthen the legal and institutional frameworks for upholding the rule of law, government has enacted the Judicial Training Institute of Zambia Act Number 14 of 2023. This House has enacted that act. As you know, this House is part of government. All of us in this House are members of the government. So, which this establishes the Judicial Training Institute. Commendable indeed. Thank you to this House. The Institute will facilitate continuous professional development for our judges, judicial officers, and other staff. Human dignity, equity, social justice, equality, and non-discrimination. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, government has the responsibility to uphold the dignity of all our citizens, as well as their right to social justice and equal treatment all over the country. Our development efforts are therefore centered on uplifting the livelihoods of all our people in our country. In this regard, provision of clean water and adequate sanitation, quality education, quality health care, access to electricity, social protection, youth empowerment, as well as provision of maternal health facilities, Madam Speaker, are key priority areas for this government in the whole country. Madam Speaker, through our flagship intervention under the Enhanced Constituent Development Fund, which I mentioned earlier, we now see equity quality, I'm bringing in equity now, equality and social justice being restored. Many more of our children now have opportunity to learn in a dignified environment with several classroom blocks, as we talk now, being constructed. Several desks being supplied to schools. As we sit here and speak, this is happening across the country. And we want to urge all members of parliament councillors, council chairpersons, mayors, on this call to work together, irrespective of political party, just to deliver for the people of Zambia. That's our request, Madam Speaker. I think it's fair. I think it's logical. I did mention about procurement of desks locally. It's a pride for some of us who go around, and I know you all do, to see our young girls making desks, having graduated from 
our artisanal schools. Sense of success in one is body, if you like, complete. Further, further, some of our youth who were condemned to poverty, to roaming around, now, as I said, have access to skills development in order to, in order to improve their livelihoods. More young people have benefited from schools, skills development buses in the constituencies across the country. While the vulnerable secondary school learners who couldn't afford to attend boarding schools are now happily attending boarding schools. And for the first time, Madam Speaker, in the history of our country, these bursaries are decided at the constituents level. Not in Lusaka. At the constituents level. And the resource envelope is available right there. Tremendous, Madam Speaker. It's tremendous. Madam Speaker, going forward, we will continue to use the CDF to promote community-driven local development. We will continue to provide bursaries to our youth. We will do more. We will do more in this area, Madam yeah. Speaker. We are not turning back. Every year we will increase this allocation for our youth. Because we know this is the best investment, not to the child only, but to the family to the community, and I dare say, to the economy in terms of skills. Madam Speaker, in order to support the kids after such training, your government has provided empowerment grants and loans as well as a package. In order to spread benefits to others, Madam Speaker, I mean some benefit today, but in order to spread benefits to others, all those citizens who get grants should not be wasteful. They must utilize effectively these grants and facilities. Those who get loans should be able to repay these loans when they are due. Then we can recycle the money others can benefit. Very important. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, the culture of not paying loans back is something we should not support in this country. It damages credibility, risk profiling, it damages the lender's balance sheets. It doesn't matter whether it's public or private lender. We must deliberately encourage each other to pay back loans and our children when they access them. Even grants, as I said, a grant is not to be wasted. A grant is to be utilized properly for them to grow so they don't have to queue for another grant every after a year or so. Very important. Madam Speaker, government has continued with provision of water and supply, as I said, sanitation services to ensure that outbreaks of waterborne diseases such as cholera and typhoid in our communities are a thing of the past. Madam Speaker, I am law in morale. We should be law in morale when we see lives that could be maintained are lost because of things associated with our own conduct. Not good. We've made progress, Madam Speaker, in ensuring that our people have access to electricity as well. Through the rural electrification program, and more will continue being brought on board, including mini grids, including enhancing solar. I believe, Madam Speaker, this House and members of this House heard our pronouncement in Chipata just a few days ago to pull down duties and taxes associated with energy provision and irrigation funding. And it will happen in this year's realignment of the budget. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, 
the government is determined to improve the quality of education and we are focused on addressing the teacher-pupil ratio as well as the learning infrastructure and overall environment. Overall environment. Big loaded. Big and loaded. In this regard, 7,221 teachers were recruited in 2023 in the 2023 teacher recruitment exercise. And more classroom blocks, as I said earlier on, are being built. We therefore urge all our newly recruited teachers, this is extremely important, all our newly re recruited teachers should serve communities where they are posted and not just go and register there and then walk back to towns. When such happens, I think we must take the jobs away and give to others who want to serve the communities. This we need to work together because MPs know which teacher is not there at the location where they were posted. Let's work together. Similarly, similarly, Madam Speaker, we call on all our community to assist the newly recruited teachers and other public service workers to settle in in these, for them, young people, strange environments. We can assist them to settle in. I think we shouldn't see them fail. We should help them succeed by setting them in, including business opportunities to build houses to rent to these. Because in their salaries, I do believe there's some component of that facility. So let's take this as an opportunity. All of us, especially rural members of parliament, build one or two houses around the school so teachers or nurses can rent. Very important. Madam Speaker, government has continued to implement the school feeding program, now called the Homegrown School Meals Program. The rebranding of the program is meant to promote its sustainability through the use of nutritious local foods while supporting local farmers. To this effect, over 2.2 million vulnerable learners from 82 selected districts across the country are being supported under the Homegrown School Meals Program. We call upon local businesses, churches, NGOs, civil society to join government by adopting schools for homegrown schools meals. Madam Speaker, in our continued efforts to promote inclu inclusive development, 3,300 vulnerable youth across the country have been provided with grants under the National Youth Scheme. Our youth are also being empowered with motorbikes. Yes, with motorbikes on loan basis. I talked about loans earlier. These are all initiatives aimed at enabling them to venture into income generating activities so they don't queue for handouts. So we kill the habit of queuing for handouts because it's destructive to our people. We are also offering our youth skills training in various fields, I said it already. Graduates from these youth resource centers are doing a tremendous job. Tremendous job. Tremendous job. And it is our duty and the government has continued to assist them with startup kits such as sewing machines, toolboxes, welding machines, cutting equipment. This is practical. This is to a community of our population which was ignored. At our time, if you qualify to university, you got a bursary automatically. But the colleagues that didn't go to university were left on their own. Now this government is attending to them and attending to them seriously. Madam Speaker, in our continued efforts to enhance timely access to justice, five local courts were constructed and eight rehabilitated across the country, while legal, and aid, legal aid offices were established in five additional districts across the country. Government has also established legal aid desks in police stations, right in the police stations, 
and correctional facilities to allow accused persons access to legal services at a point of need. Some of us know what that means. Additionally, legal services, legal services units have been established in various districts of the country to provide community outreach services, legal services. The number of citizens who received legal aid services in 2023 was 31,556 across the country. Madam Speaker, further, to further promote equity and human dignity, the new dawn UPND government administration has continued to implement various social protection programs. These include social cash transfer, shock responsible social protection, shock such as drought, emergency cash transfer, and the food security pack. The shock response social protection program aims to cushion the beneficiaries of the social cash transfer from the negative effects of climate change, as I said, especially the current droughts. In addition, we continue to provide vulnerable but viable households with farming inputs under the Food Security Pack program. We would like feedback, Madam Speaker, from the members of Parliament so we can better what we're doing for the people. Madam Speaker, overcrowding in correctional facilities remains a source of concern to government. The current inmate population in the country is over 25,000 against the holding capacity of 10,650. To address overcrowding in correctional facilities, Madam Speaker, government is expanding open air correctional centers across the country. The open air correctional facilities, for example, in Dansanga, in Mwembeshi, and Mwomboshi, two different places, Mwembeshi and Mwomboshi, have been expanded creating an additional holding capacity to accommodate over 3,000 inmates. Madam Speaker, government is also promoting the imposition of non-custodial sentences for minor offenses and the continued granting of police bond to decongest police cells and bail on flexible conditions not asking for sureties who are civil servants, as it used to be. You don't need a surety who is a civil servant now. The civil servants will be scared of being sureties. So this is now liberal and all bailable offenses. And I insist, some people seated in this room know I talk to them regularly, that when a matter is bondable, give bond. A matter is bailable, give bail. There's no issue about that. No issue about that. Good governance and integrity. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, we are committed to and will continue maintaining law and order in our country, as this is important for social order and economic development. We therefore thank our citizens across the country for maintaining peace this far. We particularly thank our citizens in areas where we have had by-elections since the August 2021 elections. For the peaceful atmosphere exhibited so far. It was gratifying, Madam Speaker, to see members of opposing political parties freely mingling. Madam Speaker, it was gratifying to see members of opposing political parties freely mingling during their campaigns, including in Shuangandu of Mochinga province, which was a volatile area just a few years ago. But I was very happy to see members campaigning from all political parties and laughing, joking. Then they go and campaign to the voters. That's how it should be. There's more political space now than ever before. Yeah. Madam Speaker, may we also take this opportunity to thank our women and youth across the country 
for turning out in huge numbers to commemorate their days, yeah. Women's Day and Youth Day. Yeah. And all political parties who wish to participate were there. What a joy. Yeah. That's how the country should be. Yeah. And we should not allow to regress. We should not go back to the dark days. We must improve. We can do more, but we should do more together in this direction. It's the correct direction. Madam Speaker, we remain firmly committed to upholding the tenets of good governance and integrity. Our resolve is to underscore, is underscored by the measures we've instituted in the fight against corruption and maladministration. Madam Speaker, we are making progress in our fight against corruption to strengthen collaboration and the efficiency among law enforcement agencies government established the Asset Recovery Interagency Coordination Framework in 2023. Through this framework, millions of kwacha, I must say, Madam Speaker, millions of kwacha, maybe some members of our community, our country do not know, but millions of kwacha in movable, non-movable assets, including cash, have been recovered. Maybe we are not doing well in reporting. We should report transparent and open and more and more frequent. Government has also strengthened the legal framework on the management of forfeited assets through the issuance of statutory instrument number 13 of 2023. Madam Speaker, we share the concerns and frustrations by our people over the delayed disposal of cases related to corruption and financial and economic crimes. To address this concern, government has issued statutory instrument number 10 of 2024 to provide for speedy disposal of such cases. Justice delayed, justice denied. In this fight against corruption, we are encouraged by the fact that our people and other stakeholders are beginning to acknowledge the impact of these efforts. This is evident in the improved score and ranking on the recent Transparency International Corruption Perception Index. Again, independent body. We have nothing to do with that body, but their results are open. For We will surely continue with our efforts for more tangible and lasting results. And Madam Speaker, these changes are good for the accused. These changes are good for society, for the prosecutors as well because we need to discharge these cases quickly but fairly. I want to repeat, Madam Speaker, what I've said several times. No one should be arrested before an investigation is done. If the investigation is not done, leave people alone and continue with your investigation. And when you have the evidence, you arrest, then bond. Ten hours you arrest, 14 hours bond. <laughs> Madam Speaker, if the matter is not bondable, 10 hours you arrest, 14.30 you are in court, and bail must be granted. I said that already. This is not a joke. This is serious. And then prosecute quickly. And we get on with our lives. Thank you. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, to improve access to public services for our people, government has continued implementing the Digital Transformation Initiative. The Digital Transformation Initiative has minimized face-to-face -face interaction with service providers. This has reduced the risk of corruption in the delivery of public services. So far, 300 public services are being accessed on the ZAM portal, also referred to as the government service bus. Using the ZAM portal, for instance, the Ministry of Lands has now started issuing title deeds. To be specific, 39,691 title deeds, certificates of title, have been issued through this platform. Big change. There are glitches, 
the effort is to continue to clean up the glitches. Madam Speaker, we have also accelerated digital transformation to enhance service delivery. Decentralization, which for a long time, Madam Speaker, decentralization for a long time remained a mere rhetoric, but is now reality. Yeah. It's now reality. We are pleased to report that through the decentralization process, some public services with matching resources have been taken closer to the, to the citizens. These include district health services, veterinary services, as well as maritime and pontoon services. Our people are now able to participate in decisions that affect their welfare from within their communities, not in Lusaka only. Lusaka is not Zambia. Zambia is not Lusaka. We are all aware that this government has increased the constitu constituents' development fund, as I say, from a paltry 1.6 million per constituents per year to 30.6 million. It's here. It's here. It's real. Let's work hard to utilize this money to benefit those who put us in office across the country. Across the country. To improve the rate of utilization of these funds, we have decentralized the approval of projects from the Ministry of Local Government in Osaka and Rural Development to provincial administration centers. We urge all members of parliament, you the members of parliament, to work closely with local authorities to ensure timely implementation of projects for the benefit of our people in our country. Madam Speaker, to promote transparency and accountability in the management of public affairs, we enacted the Access to Information Act number 24 of 2023. As you know, this has been sitting around this house for over 20 years. No one had the courage to enact it. This government has done it. This government has done it. The UPND New Dawn administration has walked the talk on this one. We are delivering on our promises. Access to information in our country is now law. It's not just a discussion point. It is now law. And we must utilize it. Sustainable development. Madam Speaker, we have a duty to utilize our resources and manage the environment in a sustainable manner. We all have an obligation to work towards addressing challenges of pollution, Madam Speaker, climate change, and over-exploitation of natural resources. Madam Speaker, as government, your government, we are committed to collaborating with all stakeholders, including political parties, members of parliament, councillors, chairmen, council mayors, sorry, mayors, all of our community, church, traditional, we are committed to working together in our quest to combat the effects of climate change. The current drought is one clear example which we must fight together and win. Of course, irrigation farming, increased productivity, of course, water harvest, approvals for water permits, WAMA, ZEMA, project approvals, cannot be business as usual. These must fall in line, like yesterday, to help us fight this drought. Madam Speaker, to turn this drought from a calamity into an opportunity to change our country forever, to anchor it on irrigation farming, for certainty, for higher productivity. We can't do this alone, Madam Speaker. We need to do it together to ensure food security, energy security. Two double tragedies, energy security or insecurity, food insecurity, obviously constitute national insecurity but we shall overcome as we work together in this space. Our efforts, Madam Speaker, to plant 2 million trees by 2028 have gained momentum. Thus far, 
645,000 trees have been planted on 538 hectares of land. We need to double, triple, quad our efforts to plant more trees to save the earth for ourselves and our future generations. With these adverse climatic conditions being faced, we call on all our citizens to desist from the habit of destroying nature, grass, trees. Topography, overall, gullies, bad farming habits, following gullies, we need to save human lives, livestock, our crops. When I say livestock, I mean domesticated, Madam Speaker, and those in the wild part of our assets. We call on you members of parliament. We call on traditional leaders, churches and other stakeholders to join government in sensitizing communities on these negative vices. We wish to commend the private sector for supplementing government's efforts by putting in place similar initiatives aimed at combating the effects of climate change. Madam Speaker, Carbon trading is a cardinal issue. Carbon trading is cardinal. It's a cardinal issue. And in addressing the effects of climate change as it promotes conservation of forests and forest resource, resources across the globe, carbon trading, carbon market becomes extremely essential. Forests and trees are vital in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Government will work with all stakeholders in, sensi in the sensitization on the issues of carbon markets, so that our citizens, including members of this August House and traditional leaders and the church, appreciate how carbon markets operate. Yeah. Today, if you talk about carbon markets, people say, what is he talking about? So this government is working to make sure that we can all understand how these markets operate. And your government has now temporarily ceased signing any agreements around carbon markets because we don't want to sign wrong agreements and lock ourselves in. So, three critical issues. One, what is the market? What's the carbon market? What is the ton of carbon, Madam Speaker? We all need to have a general understanding. Number two, what is the pricing? What is the correct pricing of a ton of carbon? So we don't leave money on the table. Number three, Madam Speaker, the redistribution of economic benefits or resources, all money simply arising from carbon trade. So your government is working very hard, cooperating with the international organizations in these three elements. And we are happy that we are making progress in that space. I want to emphasize, Madam Speaker, the communities that protect the carbon assets must be the ones benefiting more so that we can move them away from the negative vices by giving them alternative options, big keeping, small mining, big mining, legally, correctly. We can move them into activities where funds arising from carbon market trade are directed in their way. That's the message here. Madam Speaker, good agricultural practices play a pivotal role in achieving sustainable development. To this effect, government in collaboration with our development partners has, has been promoting climate smart agriculture. We are pleased that so far 147,412 small scale farmers countrywide are using climate smart agriculture technologies. We need to accelerate the adoption of these technologies to mitigate the impact of climate change. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, as already mentioned, to reduce the dependence on rain-fed agriculture, we are aggressively promoting the development of irrigation schemes for our farmers. Micro, small, medium, large, all together. 
in order for them to produce throughout the year. Last year, Madam Speaker, I attended in Nyimba what we called launch of the planting season. And at that function in Nyimba of Eastern Province, I said, this is the last time I'm doing this because there's nothing called a planting season. We should be planting every month. We should be harvesting every month. So that activity is now redundant. It's monthly. Harvest, planting. That's where we should be going. Madam Speaker, we have continued to construct water harvesting facilities, dams, weirs, surface water, underground water. Water mapping is where now some of the money in the budget reallocation will go. So we know where the water resources sit. We don't sink bowls anywhere, anyhow. We sink bowls where we know the water is there. So we are not wasteful. So we save money. But we should be able to irrigate as well. Madam Speaker, this is in line with our declaration of the current drought due to El Nino as a national disaster and national images. And following this declaration, the, as I said, the 2024 national budget is being reviewed to move resources, Madam Speaker, away from consumption expenditure, habits, bad habits, workshops, perpetual workshops, to meet to talk about the next meeting. No. 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 Money will be moved away from those areas, which we, you, the parliamentarians, had already approved. We are now asking you to revisit that and move money to areas such as water harvest, feeding our people, to start with, Madam Speaker, priorities to feed our people, and then to move into sustainable irrigation-based agriculture with higher productivity levels. That's the core, and we do believe this House will support this budget realignment days ahead from today. In conclusion, Madam Speaker, in the past one year, we continue to make notable progress in the application of our national values and principles. We have been steadfast in the fight against corruption, in the fight against alcohol and substance abuse, in the fight against early marriages, in the fight against gender-based violence. We will continue to institute crime mitigation measures, including, Madam Speaker, gun control gun control. We are seeing too much use of guns, excessive use of guns. And the minister responsible has been directed to put controls around there. I guess he has already made a statement on the floor of this house. And it will be accelerated and implemented. I would rather buy a plow than a gun. Our efforts to promote morality and human dignity, to provide adequate sanitation, Madam Speaker, to uphold good governance, as well as to ensure sustainable social economic development, anchored on hard work, Madam Speaker, hard work and not laziness, not queuing for handouts, but working for something in return. You can have what you want. This culture must shift and shift quickly. It slows down our economic re re reconstruction agenda. You see it every day. I see it every day. It became something abnormal to talk about hard work because the normalcy was laziness and the returns, handsome returns out of laziness. How can that be? How can a nation develop on that basis? So, Madam Speaker, I ask this House that we walk together this path of promoting hard work and kicking out laziness from our societies across the country. Accountability, of course, no question about it. 
no question about that. I want to say, Madam Speaker, when we do what we are saying, we will reap dividends. No question about it. I simply mean we will reap what we plant, what we sow. That is our message here. Let's sow correctly, we will reap positive results. Yeah, 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 yeah. We admit, Madam Speaker, that more needs to be done. Whatever we have said today here, more needs to be done. We understand, we acknowledge that, and we we'll need the support of others, including our colleagues from different political parties, religious you know, organizations, global community. Madam Speaker, our national values and principles are critical to national development. As citizens, we have an urgent and compelling duty to fulfill our national values and principles, which should never be sacrificed for anyone and for any reason. For anyone and for any reason. Every one of us, every stand we take for morality and ethics, every act of patriotism, every step towards unity, every activity aimed at strengthening the fabric of our nation, our nation, national, nation, in line with our motto of one Zambia, one nation, we see it as an opportunity. Absolutely. One Zambia, one nation, one nation, one people. We see this as an opportunity. We understand our democracy, constitutional democracy. Constitutional democracy. Leaders will come and go. Leaders will come and go. But all leaders must work for the people of Zambia at any time. So, as a nation, and in line with our motto, one Zambia, one nation, one people, every opportunity we we see, we must use it to promote human dignity and social justice. Every stand must be for good and integrity. Every effort to uphold democracy and constitutionalism assures our nation of the future we aspire to have. For us and for our genetic material to come after us. A nation in which we as the Zambian family can raise capable, responsible, decent and successful children and citizens. Yeah, 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 yeah. Madam Speaker, as our country turns 60 on the 24th of October this year, let us all strive to be the best we can be now and into the future. Yeah. Let us commit to always doing good, to do good yeah. for this great nation. Yeah. To always, to always be good to each other within our democratic dispensation. We must work to do good to each other within our competitive democratic, constitutional democratic dispensation. We can achieve both. These are not contradictions. Let us always stand for and live by our national values and principles. Indeed, let us elect to walk this path as one Zambia, one nation, one people, under one God, under one God. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, may the Almighty God bless us all. May the Almighty God bless our motherland, Zambia. Madam Speaker, I thank you and I beg to move.